Welcome back. So I've already done videos on the VSI and the altimeter. We've only got one left, so let's go over the airspeed. So here you can see I worked up a little 3D model of the airspeed indicator. You can see on the inside all the different gears and rods, uh, the diaphragm, which is this guy here, which is going to expand and cause those to move and then in turn eventually move the needle. Uh, and then on the flip side, we got the static port and this janky looking pitot tube. Uh, by the way, this, this program really only lets me do uh, shapes, so I couldn't really make a perfect pitot tube. So this is what we're going to have to work with. But we got the pitot tube here, the static port, and the diaphragm. As you can see, the pitot tube, uh, the air that's going to flow through that is directly connected to the diaphragm. And the static port, all the air that's flowing through that is going to flow into the casing. Now, the reason that we need the pitot tube for this instrument uh, compared to the VSI and the altimeter, they don't need it at all, is because we need to be able to read the actual ram air or the um, impact air that's going to be flowing through and then hitting the diaphragm because that's what's going to actually make it expand and then give us an accurate reading on the needle. But we also need to be able to read the different pressural air outside. So they work hand in hand, the pitot tube and the static port, because it works kind of just like the altimeter. So let's just say even if our airspeed was at 80 knots for the entire flight, if we start to do a climb up to some less dense air, then the instrument is going to want to start to contract because it's going to be at a different pressure than the casing if we didn't have the static port. But since we do have the static port, the casing and the pressure on the inside of the actual diaphragm are going to always be the exact same. So they're basically going to cancel out and it's not going to be a factor that's going to actually affect the airspeed indicator. Since the pressure isn't going to matter as we do our climbs and descents, we won't have to worry about that anymore. All that's really going to matter is the actual ram air or impact air that's going to flow through the pitot tube. So let's talk about a scenario where you start to do a takeoff and you add full power. Obviously the speed of the air is going to increase slowly, which is then in turn going to flow through the tube and hit the diaphragm, causing it to expand. As it expands, you could see this little rod that's connected to, it's going to start to swing to the right. Uh, when that does so, it's going to move this whole other rod attached to it also to the right, therefore moving this gear up here towards the right, twisting this other gear to the right as well. And finally, that's connected to the pole that's actually going to rotate the needle to the up position. So lots of things moving to the right up in here. But um, that's basically how the airspeed's going to increase. Then let's say that you pull out the power to idle and everything is going to basically work opposite. The speed of the air is going to start to decrease, causing the actual diaphragm to contract a little bit more. And then everything in here is going to actually move to the left this time, causing the needle to start move, to move downward and show our airspeed start to decrease. So yeah, I hope that helped you guys learn about the airspeed indicator a little bit more. And now hopefully you can explain it and actually be able to visualize it kind of in your head uh, with this little model that I made up. And that's going to be it. If you all want me to do the other three instruments, I'm debating whether or not I should, but let me know down below and maybe I'll do those soon. Peace.